Hey YouTube, it's New Mistaka, and I'm back with you for part two of the current mega grading results set of videos. It is a cold and chilly morning in London, England, and uh, I think we've got Siberian winds that have come in or something from the Arctic at the moment. So it's, uh, it's pretty chilly, but um, the good news is my cold seems to have disappeared, so hopefully you should get some decent audio on this uh, video. So what we have here is the second box and it contains two halves. Normally um, one video's worth is like half of one of these boxes. So there'll be two, uh, two videos yet to come, this one and the next one. And uh, so let's get into the coins. Starting with the 1989, the half sovereign, this one got a 69. A, a 70 in this coin is probably around 500 to 550 pounds. A 69 is going to be in the 400s and a raw one is probably going to be in the 275, 300. So it's one of those coins, it's getting graded more and more, it's worth grading. The plain edge, this one got a 69, um, a little bit less than uh, is desirable because uh, the 70 is about probably 80% of the coins have been getting a 70. However, this one here, the, uh, the Unicorn, Queen's Beast, quite a few of those have been graded so far. Most of them have done pretty well with a 70 like this one, but occasionally you get a 69. I think sometimes NGC play silly games on this, and uh, you know, sometimes it works in your favour, like this one, where uh, this one got a very, very awesome PF70 for the two sovereign coin. Um, I guess if you had a choice of which one of the three coins in the set to get a 70, it would be the one sovereign, but um, can't have everything. At least we got one 70 grade in the two sovereign. 1984, uh, five sovereign. This one is a uh, brilliant uncirculated version of the five sovereign piece or the five pound piece. 1.18 ounces of gold in this. Uh, and these seem to be consistently popular uh, in 69 or 70, old or new. There's a lot of collectors with a preference for these big five sovereign chunky gold pieces. And you can probably understand why that is. Another 70 here for this lovely £10 um, Britannia, one tenth of an ounce of gold, special design year. And uh, I still think, although they haven't shown signs of massively moving up, I think that they're very low mintage coins with quite a lot of potential. Chinese Panda gold coins uh, before 2010 are pretty difficult to find and very difficult to find in great grades. Uh, this particular collector grades a lot of pandas um, they've had their ups, they've had their downs. I think pandas are likely to be um, a pretty good time to invest at the moment. So uh, we're not in one of the big up periods at the moment. So you can find these coins, even the older ones, for not a huge amount over spot quite often. And I think they represent a pretty good choice for people who want to buy some kind of spot related bullion but with an upside potential as well as a semi-numismatic choice and um, they rarely get 70 grades so if you get a 70 it's outstanding but 67 68 and 69 are the normal grades you get for these coins usually they have to be conserved because they're if they're kept in the original plastic then they get residue of the plastic onto the gold coin and so conserving them removes all of that stuff from the surface of the coin and allows them to grade properly. So if you are thinking about grading pandas, usually you'll need to budget for the conservation on, and the grading as well, and it will take a little bit of extra time for that to come through. So there's no quick job when it comes to pandas. Anything you can serve with NGC takes an extra few weeks for the conservation process before it goes back into NGC for grading. Um, this particular collector's chosen a lot of the half ounce gold pandas, and I think half ounce is actually a pretty good sweet spot. Half ounce and quarter ounce are my choice, my personal choice. 
the one ounce pandas are a nice chunk of gold but they don't tend to move in the same way in in terms of collector's desirability compared to the quarter ounce and the half ounce uh, you can see here large date plain eye and uh, ngc will actually look at pandas for varieties without paying the 15 dollar variety fee so they will actually go through them they'll look at whether they're large date or small date uh, mirrored frosted all those kind of regular varieties and they will put them on the label um, and i wish they would do that with sovereigns um, more than they do i think that they started doing it obviously for the chinese market they've got an office in shanghai and i'm hoping over the next year or two they will actually really build their variety accreditation on gold sovereigns as well uh, because it's one area where ngc are maybe a little bit behind pcgs in terms of variety attribution i'd be interested in what you guys think about pandas generally silver pandas gold pandas have they got some um future potential have they passed their sell-by date have you been selling your pandas have you been buying them have you any interest in them at all um what would be better than a panda are the queen's beasts now better than the pandas are libertas better than the pandas where do they come in your list of desirability um i think that um pandas went through a bad patch last year when in terms of new releases they were overplayed I think people have lost a little bit of interest in pandas because the mintages have now been put up so much after 2010. And uh, I think that older pandas are still uh, highly desirable and will have their day in future and will prove to be a pretty good investment, providing one doesn't overpay originally. Britannias, similarly, um, Britannias have some lovely designs and are highly desirable very low mintage even compared to pandas i mean very very low mintage coins um so moving away from pandas and on to the subject of fakes the one dollar gold coin is probably one of the most widely faked american coins i've had at least three or four fake one dollar gold pieces uh, this is the first 1862 type 3 gold coin i've had as a fake um there's a lot of these things around you know i mean it it kind of it looks a little bit suspicious and there was a little bit of a question on it when it went in and the owner decided to put it in for grading anyway just to get ngc's pronouncement on it but there's a lot of these uh these coins this one is probably slightly better as a fake than a couple that i've seen uh, but it does look a tiny bit odd um, but you know i have to say it's not a bad fake you know and, I, and again same as the indian one that i had the other day i don't think that an average collector looking at this or buying this on ebay would know this was a fake one dollar gold piece and uh, and that's the problem with a lot of this um fake old coinage a lot of it is old and it's very very difficult for somebody who <clears throat> isn't an expert and doesn't see hundreds of these things to actually see whether it's a fake or not onward to a 1914 first world war um, gold sovereign outstanding condition i mean this one it's a, there are quite a few of these coins around 64 and above is getting to be right at the top this 1898 South African Pond didn't do badly with an AU55. Um, there are quite a few better ones that have been graded, but not bad at all. <clears throat> I think the owner can be quite pleased with that as well. Then we've got uh, this one, which is kind of interesting coin. Uh, Turkey. I don't know very much about Turkish coins. I'm not even going to say whether this is rare or good or bad or otherwise it looks pretty good to me but i'm not an expert in turkish coins but this one looks to be in pretty outstanding condition and did very very well with a 62. Mm. 
The next one of these belongs to me. I bought this at a Goldberg's auction in New York and it got a 66, proof 66 cameo, and it joins the one that I've already got, which was graded a 67. So I've now got two of these. I think these are underrated. I think there's very few of them around. It was a pretty small mintage, and I think that would be a potential star going forward in a number of years' time. This one is 2017, quarter ounce, uh, Onza Libertad. <coughs> It only got a 68, and it's a big, big danger with these coins. Any tiny blemish, and they will mark these down. And when they get delivered, they get delivered in a bag full of rattly coins jostling together. So it's very difficult to get good grades on Libertad BU Gold coins. <laughs> 